Some of the most striking imageries of the impact of the new coronavirus outbreak have been photos of empty streets and tourist attractions all around the world. But earlier this year, when reports of the new virus started emanating from China and spreading all over Europe, global health officials began to worry about what would happen if the virus enters Africa, where the health systems suck. Now the virus is in Africa, and it's spreading like no man's business. And now, many African nations are fighting aggressively to slow down and eventually halt the spread of this disease by hook or crook. The South African president has announced a three-week lockdown in the whole country. Senegal and Ivory Coast have both announced they are imposing a state of emergency. Other countries like Ghana, Nigeria, Angola, and Zimbabwe, just to name a few, are either closing borders, banning international flights, or imposing travel bans. Tunisia has already imposed its lockdown since last week. Now, in a nutshell, Africa is locking down. And today, we are going to be talking about the coronavirus in Africa. I am Sunday Christopher Mwamusa, and you are welcome back to Prime Reporters TV. As the new coronavirus pandemic continues to spread across the globe, with more than 434,000 cases globally as of March 25th, fear is gripping Africa as cases of the virus in the continent rose above 2,000 last Saturday. Although the coronavirus was late to appear in Africa, but today the number of cases is alarming and increasing dramatically. As of March 23, at least 45 of the 54 countries in the continent had reported cases of the virus. Uganda, Eritrea, and Angola also announced their first coronavirus cases. And while the Democratic Republic of Congo, Ghana, Nigeria, and the Gambia also reported first cases of death respectively, many African countries have begun to put restrictions on movement to try to stem the spread of this infectious disease. Nigeria announced that it is closing airports to all incoming international flights for one month. Rwanda said all unnecessary movements outside the home are banned for two weeks except for essential services such as healthcare and shopping. Uganda is closing its borders to all but cargo. Ethiopia said all arriving passengers would face mandatory quarantine as of Monday this week. Republic of Congo and Ghana are closing their borders, but Somalia is lifting its ban on international flights for two days so that stranded citizens can come back home. And with all these measures being radically taken, one would think that Africa has in hindsight of the Ebola crisis learned from its past and from the wait-and-see approaches of some EU countries like Sweden, for example, where up to 500 people are still allowed to gather in the same place. But from the look of things, it is as plain as a pike staff that Africa is clueless. If there's anything coronavirus, is for the rich men, not for the poor man. Nothing shows me that the sickness is this country. You understand? Hey, I'm proud of myself. I can't wear a hand robe. I can't cover my... I cannot be breathing well because I'm hearing rumors from outside country that it's not my country. Africa is not ready to make hay while the sun shines. And this puts the lives of over 1.3 billion people at risk. How do I know this? I'll show you. Somebody actually created yes. corruption viruses. I mean, um, uh, coronavirus. Yes. Somebody deliberately sat down yes. in the in the lab yeah. and came up with the, with the creation yeah. of the coronavirus yeah. and with the, with the view to infect yes. and destroy other people. Yes. So what else can, uh, uh, who else uh, oh, yes. more corrupt than that? Yes. But until the government has said, avoid mass gatherings, usually it will be above 100 people, 
So when we count the people and the people are above 100, then what we will do is that we will push them in another room anyway, so that we still below 100. Africa's biggest problem is not this or this, but this and this. While many African countries are putting in place restrictions on movement to slow the spread of the new coronavirus, Angola and Zimbabwe have also followed suit. Last week Wednesday, the president of Angola, Joao Lorenzo, declared in a presidential decree a complete lockdown on all of the country's points of entries for 15 days with effect from last Friday. And also, Zimbabwe's president, Elmasi Managangwa, described the pandemic as a national disaster and imposed a ban on traveling and gathering of more than a hundred persons. He emphasized that it behooves everyone to adhere strictly to the travel ban, including himself. He said that he would only go out when it is only necessary and inevitable. But just a few days later, he defied his own government travel ban and traveled to Namibia for the swearing in of the re-elected president of Namibia. And this was just a day after the first case of the coronavirus was reported in Zimbabwe. Another president who also defied his own government ban to be there was Joao Lorenzo of Angola, who had earlier that same week locked down all borders. The question is, how does a leader expect citizens to comply with an executive order made and defied by the same leader, even at this crucial moment when the safety of citizens should be paramount? That is one big problem Africa is facing. And meanwhile, in Nigeria, the president and some of his senators are still struggling to pronounce coronavirus here as a country, big and powerful country like America, they are taking very, very drastic measures to, con to either contain or to prevent the coron coronavirus from entering their country. Saudi Arabia, for example, they don't have a known case, one single case of cor coronavirus. Or COVID-19. We are working with the Ministry of Health on protecting our citizens from covid one nine virus. After the first coronavirus case was confirmed in Nigeria on February 28, it took President Buhari almost one month to address the nation. While other leaders all over the world were addressing their nations and giving them status quo and words of hope, President Buhari kept mum and was nowhere close to a camera at a time when the country needed him the most. It took him over three weeks to declare a ban on international flights from high-risk countries and restrictions on public gatherings. Now, Nigerians are sharply divided over the ban and restrictions on religious and public gatherings. While some say it is better late than never, others see it as medicine after death. But to make matters worse, the coronavirus testing laboratories are located in just two of the six regions in the whole country, leaving out four others, that is 33 out of the 36 states in Nigeria. But the Minister of Health said there is no cause for alarm. Like, seriously? No cause for alarm? Now, taking us to Ivory Coast, members of the public expressed their outrage over the special treatment given to some certain people that are close to the regime. This came after a football striker, Max Grade, and some very important persons supposedly succeeded in rat running quarantine measures that is imposed on the rest of the country. Si je fais cette vidéo, c'est pour appeler les autorités à se pencher sur ce cas d'injustice qui est en train de se passer ici en Côte d'Ivoire. On ne peut pas être dans le même vol, être ivoirien au même titre, vouloir rentrer chez nous et nous rendre compte que les Max Alain Gradel sont dans le même vol en business avec nous. Quand on descend, ils disparaissent. Les enfants d'Assalfo, la femme d'Assalfo, quand on descend, ils disparaissent. Now, the situation nearly sparked a riot among the quarantine passengers, forcing one of these important persons to admit his guilt and apologize to the public. Now you know how I know. 
Another big problem and threat to Africa's fight against the coronavirus pandemic is religion. A study by Pew Research Center shows that Africa is the most religious part of the world. But what happens when religion is part of the danger? Some of the measures that is taken globally by authorities to slow down or halt the spread of the coronavirus pandemic include shutting down schools, banning public gatherings, and restricting movements. While many African countries have also taken such a drastic decision to reduce the amount that people come into contact with others, most religious leaders and their followers have shown discontent for or even defied the social distancing others. In Kenya, for example, a church went ahead with its service and replaced the hand sanitizer with holy water. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> In Nigeria, although the government had placed an indefinite moratorium on religious or any other form of gathering just to try to contain the spread of the coronavirus, Bishop Oyedepo of the Living Faith Church, also known as Winners Chapel, still had two church services with impunity. And this was the same day that the Nigeria's coronavirus infections jumped to 30. This is the same pastor whose churches in the US, UK, and other countries outside Africa have complied with the same social distancing order. But here in Africa, he blatantly flaunted the order and gathered tens of thousands without provision of hand sanitizers to members. One would think it's suicidal for African religious leaders not to learn the lesson from South Korea, where religious gullibility helped spread the virus. In South Korea, members of the Grace River Church had salt water sprayed into their mouth. The church firstly believed it would stop the spread of the coronavirus. But on March 16, the church became the site of a new coronavirus cluster with 46 new cases. Now back to Nigeria. Law enforcement authorities besieged worship centers in some part of Lagos, Ogun State, and the FCT, Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, to enforce the social distancing measures. Yet, Winner's Chapel was left out. And it is obvious that the reason security agencies couldn't enforce the ban on Kenan land is because of Oyedekbo's towering influence and friendship with political bigwigs in the country. When Jesus Christ was confronted by the devil's suggestion to jump off the cliff, he knew that God would deliver him. But he felt there was no need for avoidable testimony. Sometimes we don't have to show power because we already have it. Now, this is not a power torso. And when we, as the African Christians, understand that loving your neighbor as yourself means social distancing, then life will become better. Now, it's not just in Africa, but all around the world. The reason most religious people are gullible is not because of what they believe, but rather how they believe it. Because for most religious people, their desire to believe far outweighs their rational thinking. And that is the threat of gullibility. And most religious people, most religious leaders, of course, rely on the gullibility of their followers to survive. Now, here's a problem. Islamic fundamentalists in the north and blind Christian fanatics in the south. What a deadly cocktail. But to fight this pandemic in Africa and the rest part of the world, all must obey the authorities and all must do their duty to protect others from the pandemic. Stay at home, avoid mass gathering, and adhere to the social distancing others. Presidents, kings, queens, princes, princesses, pastors, imams, the high and the powerful, everyone is exposed. There is no vaccine, no cure. No one is asking you to close the church. No one can close the church. The government is just asking you to close your buildings. To bake a cake, you need to break some eggs. And besides, the church is the body of Christ. Nobody can close the church of Christ. And the same politicians who shared rice, money, and t-shirts during the elections cannot share hand sanitizers in this period. So the responsibility to love yourself and your neighbor is on you. So please stay at home. 
Avoid mass gathering. And that is the only way we can fight this pandemic. And that's all for this week. I will try to keep you updated on the coronavirus. But if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out and leave it in the comment section below. And if you like this video, make sure you click the like button, comment and share. But don't also forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos when they are published. Thank you very much and see you next week.